we've seen a bunch of lovely work uh, this morning from, uh, from Michael, from Luca at uh, Nokia, also from Jack Dangerman uh, at Esri. The, the theme, I would say, is um, opening up the bag of goodies. Uh, and uh, that's very much the same spirit in which I'd like to talk to you now. Uh, and when we think about opening up the bag of goodies, what we're really talking about is enablement. Uh, for partners and also for developers and for users where you have a, a kind of commons or um, uh, a place in which both content and capabilities can come together and be added to and be taken from by everybody. Uh, and it, I think we all have this shared belief that by doing that, good things will follow. So um, I, the, the thing that we're gonna be, we're gonna be showing you today very raw but uh, we're launching it at this, uh, at this website uh, today, readwriteworld.net, and um, it's extremely alpha. Okay, so we're, we're, we're making the choice to really come and start talking about it early and start engaging the community early rather than waiting until everything is all polished uh, before, uh, before putting it up. And uh, so caveat. Uh, now, many of you know about the work that, uh, that we've shown before um, that connects Flickr images with street side. And uh, this, this is based on, on, uh, on the photosynth technology. So in this case, uh, it's, it's all explorable at, at maps.bing.com slash explore. Uh, this street side imagery uh, is, is content that, of course, we've been collaborating for, uh, for the past uh, year plus with uh, Nokia and Navtech on, on, uh, doing, on doing collection at scale. And this is how it combines with Flickr imagery. We launched this uh, as a sort of preview or as a technical demo last year, uh, almost exactly a year ago. Now, what we've, what we've got working since is the ability to do this in real time. And uh, so this is, I'm, I'm just giving you a little bit of background about this project and how it worked uh, with respect to our technical experiment. This was the coverage of photos in Flickr that were geotagged that we, we managed to connect to snap to street side imagery uh, last year. And this is a little bit of a geeky slide, but it shows you the errors. Uh, in the in the geocodes of those images when we first ingested them, so uh, as you can see, you know some of the images are quite precise, but most of them are many meters off. Uh, the the median is th about 30 meters, the mean is almost 40 meters off, and uh, that's a very blurry function. If you're going to take all of the positions of all of your geomedia and blur them with this kind of uncertainty, then uh, what you can do with those uh, geolocated media is quite limited. On the other hand, when you, when you look at this, that's now been geolocated very precisely. That's actually how we, how we get this distribution. Right? We, we find out exactly where it was relative to that stuff. And now we, know, we, now we know almost down to the centimeter in some cases where the camera was, which way it was aimed. So uh, from readwriteworld.net, uh, we, we have a little um, page and an API behind it that allows you to take uh, an image and um, stick the URL in there, and within a few seconds, uh, get back a match anytime it connects to the street side imagery. So those algorithms are now working in real time and uh, in a way that, that we believe we can really scale up. Uh, and the, uh, part of the magic of all this, of course, is that also when you, when you put an image in, it becomes part of the index too. And uh, what that means is that this is a sort of self-feeding or a self-growing kind of system in which the more you add, the better it gets. And the more you use it, the better it gets, much like the trace data from uh, Navtech Navigation. Uh, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch, um, switch windows here and uh, show you a little. Uh, this is a little HTML demo. I'm not sure if we're going to be bringing this one live right away, but it'll come soon. Uh, so, I'm looking at a corner of Golden Gate Park here, and these are a bunch of media that, that, are, that are in that index and are connected with it. And if I right click on one of these guys, then it's uh, really this is just a, a front end that's interrogating that surface. And you see those, uh, those red lines, that spider that just came out is uh, all of the connections between, the, between that, uh, that image and other images that were around it. So you're seeing that graph build up. Uh, think about this kind of enablement in the same kinds of terms as mashups and open graph and connect SDK. We're talking about creating a, a commons or a place where these media can all connect together, where the capabilities can be used by anybody. All right, uh, so this is just another little demo that's on there that you can, you can um, I'm, I'm not sure, I, I think we'll be opening it up to, to play with today. Uh, this, this really shows some of the, um, some of the folksonomic gold that's in that space of connected media. Uh, here, what we're so I'm, I'm showing you a little close-up of, um, of Matterhorn in uh, Disneyland. As you zoom around in the map, you can, you can find 
tags that are associated with this particular view and not the surrounding view. So it's, uh, it's, it's finding in a kind of very folksonomic way, an emergent way from the tags on those images that have been connected with this, with this place, uh, what people think that place is about. So it's just another, another fun, um, fun little demo. Now, uh, over here, we're, we're, looking, we're, we're looking at the same uh, tag explorer, or at the same uh, graph explorer um, right here in the convention center. And um, in fact, that should, be, that should be now showing on two different computers on two different screens. And uh, hopefully, as I've been talking, you've, you've been seeing some stuff popping in. We've actually been shooting some photos from the, from the, from the audience. And this is a real time index. Uh, so in that sense, it's, it's, it's no SQL based on the back end. And uh, when something happens in that index, it, uh, it updates in real time. So um, this, is a little bit, this is a little bit dodgy, but maybe, uh, yeah, so there's one, one, just, one just showed up. Let me see if I can um, try and move something over here. If, if, we, if we're lucky, we can actually move something here and see it reflected on, um, yeah, there we go. All right, so I'm moving it on one computer, and I'm seeing that, that geolocation update on the other one. So that's really showing you how this index is completely, completely real time. Um, and uh, in fact, we could even try doing a real time match, and there we go. So that's, uh, that's an image that was just taken, and it's matching to a bunch of other images that were just taken as well in this room. Uh, all right, now, now we'll, we'll switch gears for, uh, for my last few minutes and uh, have a look at another view of, um, uh, of, this, of this back end of this database. This particular view is in, in Silverlight because we had a bunch of uh, code lying around from, from our uh, technical preview and our work uh, last year uh, to render these things in Silverlight. And uh, so there's lots of photos and geomedia attached to this thing. If we, if we wait long enough, it'll download the whole lot. Uh, but in particular, what I'd like to show you here is uh, the way we've begun to ingest um, our street level imagery into the same uh, NoSQL database. So this is, uh, this is BlockView, which we launched recently for, um, for mobile phones. It's, a, it's an interesting way of taking all of that street side data and fusing it into a long strip panorama that lets you, uh, with low bandwidth and, and very easily explore uh, all along the street. Uh, now, if I click on this thing, we're going to dive in. And uh, here we are in the strip panorama. So this, this hasn't been seen yet on, on the desktop, but, uh, but it's, already, it's already on, uh, on, on Bing Mobile. Uh, and it's, it's, really, it's really kind of nice, because unlike when you're looking uh, from the street in perspective, right, when you're looking in perspective down the street, things shrink very rapidly if you're 40 meters away because of geolocation errors or something. You can't tell where you are. This, this really just lets you kind of zip along the street, look back at the other side, and so on. So it's very, very convenient that way. And uh, over here is one of my old favorite coffee shops when we still worked in the Smith Tower, uh, Trabant. And uh, so what, what we've done here is we've taken uh, the, the, block, uh, the block stitch image, which is this very large panorama, and the, um, and the immersive panorama from the street, and an interior panorama, and connected them with video, which is another service that, uh, that will allow um, anybody to use when, when we're ready to scale this up. We'll be putting that up on the site and thinking about that as an API that allows you to take any of those connections that are formed between media and generate transition video uh, to, to make that connection visceral. So now we're, now we're, in, um, now we're in an interior panorama. And um, here we took another panorama in the back of the cafe and, and again generated video for, for, that, for that transition. Uh, these, vid these videos can be generated either, either by literally taking video and then doing stabilization of the endpoints, or, by, or it can be done completely synthetically, uh, just, by, just by using um, the connection between the beginning and the end and, and doing some, some computer vision-based interpolation. Uh, we, we also took a little mini panorama of a detail, one of these pieces of art. So think about this as just traversing that graph, tra traversing that, that wear graph, if you like. Um, so this is a nice high-resolution little panorama that lets us you know, kind of explore things all the way down to the detail level. I should actually have this full screen, shouldn't I? That's a little bit nicer. Uh, notice also that, um, that the, the, uh, the copyright structures on all of these things are, um, are preserved. So we're, we're not talking about, uh, about having necessarily a uniform um, right structure for all of this stuff. And in some cases, for example, this, this imagery uh, is um, this, this particular panorama was taken by David using, using Photosynth. And uh, this image 
has a copyright attribution by Lauren Aldrich, the, the author uh, or the, the, the creator of this piece of art. Um, we, we believe that, that what's important is to make the right structures programmatically accessible and standardized in this API in such a way that you can put in things that are uh, fully in the commons, that are fully public domain, or that are creative commons. Uh, we, we'd like to encourage creative commons attribution contributions because that allows those things to be remixed and mashed up in any way. Uh, or in some cases, of course, things are, things are copyright and that should be respected and that should be expressed programmatically. And of course, as you're moving around, you can, you can choose uh, to, uh, to, render, to render things with copyright if you have, if you have those rights or not, as, as you choose. And hopefully stay legal. So I'm going to pull back out to the uh, back out to the street and back out to the map. All just movements on that graph. And uh, let's uh, let's zip over to Prague. Now this this actually used to be very easy to find, but uh, but since we released the Photosynth Panorama app um, a couple of days ago, um, I can't I can't turn on. Um, I can't turn on the panoramas here until I get quite close because we're, we're getting uh, sort of overwhelmed with, um, with stuff. All right, there we go. So we'd, we'd, like, to, we'd like to announce our first, uh, our first real content partnership for this kind of panoramic imagery today. And uh, Jeffrey, are you, are you around? Yeah. Hey, Hello. Jeffrey Martin, 360 Cities, um, most beautiful panoramas in existence as far as I know. Uh, broken many records for, for numbers of terapixels and uh, per panorama and so on. So this is this is this is just this um, nice little panorama of of a, of a train station in in Prague, and uh, that's uh, all of those 360 cities panoramas are are, are being ingested uh, into that uh, into that database, and, and we're expecting a whole lot more to start flowing in as we uh, as we as we evolve. All right, so. Um, just to make it clear what our ambitions are for that database and how we imagine this thing working, I, I think it's, it's useful to, to take a bit of a step outward. Um, <laughs> let's restart later, shall we? <laughs> it's really dangerous to give, to give demos on, on Microsoft corporate IT machines because you never know when uh, the next patch is going to be applied. So um, on the left on the left hand side over here, I've, I've got all sorts of, of media listed that um, that we that we already have in one form or another on our, on our various mapping products. There's uh, there, are, there are the map tiles themselves, which you can think about as just a very large planar panorama, uh, and Nader aerial images, which map along with those. There's synth view, which are these these uh, synthetic 45 degree views, and individual bird's eye images shot at very high resolution. Street side block view, the backpack camera, photosynths, user contributed panoramas, these lovely 360 cities, and other partner content of that sort, the Flickr photos, morph videos, streamed video 3D models, uh, C3 city models, which, which are going to be pouring into, into this NoSQL database as well. Uh, you can think about all of those as, as media in that graph. And um, of course, there are also, there's also the range of different platforms on which we can render such things. So we already have uh, HTML4, and we've been, we've been prototyping and playing with all sorts of different approaches to doing this in, in HTML5, CSS3, WebGL, and so on. Uh, there's native code on Windows Phone, Silverlight, uh, iPhone, Win32. And um, that's a lot of features, if you think about them all individually as features. And if you are a small company and you want to explore this space, and you want to you read and write, then um, it's, it's important to, to try and coalesce the way we think about all of these sorts of things. So everything that I've just been describing is really about coalescing the back end and the way the, way the metadata are represented, the way those things are represented on the back end. Uh, it's also important to coalesce on the front end in the in the uh, in the platform space, and um, you know these these are even 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 for ourselves these are the uh, these are the only the only um, sort of checkboxes that we've made in our uh, in our products publicly. These are the things that we're supporting on these different platforms for the time being, but uh, of course what we'd like to do is uh, really change the game here and think about uh, single renderers uh, using uh, using CSS three using H using HTML five. Uh, using WebGL that, that, can, that can render all of these. And um, uh, we, you know, we, we actually have over here some, some prototype uh, renderers using, um, uh, that, are, that are viewing exactly the same content um, expressed in the same way. This one is, this one is using uh, WebGL. This one is using CSS3. Uh, we're planning to open source those, uh, those viewers and put them up on the, on the site and open them up for development by the community. 
um, as soon as we as soon as we can, as soon as we've got the code a little bit cleaned up, and uh, that way we you know by by really coalescing on the platforms and really coalescing the uniformity of the way these things are read and written, um, we hope that great things will follow. Uh, all right, I've got. 23 seconds left. I didn't think I could get through all that in 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I'll end here.